Hello, and welcome to another video. So say you're given a function and asked to find the maximum or the minimum values um, of the function within an interval, like we have in this question, you have a function and you're given the interval from zero to three, and you're asked to find the maximum and the minimum of the function. What exactly are you looking for? Well, you're just saying, if you plotted this function on the graph, at what point on the graph will it be the highest? And at what point on the graph will it be the lowest? Okay, so let me just show you. Look at this graph. At what point is this the lowest? You can see this is the lowest point on this graph. Okay, uh, but what point is this? This point is, we don't know. This looks like it will never end. So because some graphs just go on forever, while well, they're supposed to go on forever, we cut it and say, okay, within this interval, what point is the highest and what point is the lowest? So we're just going to experiment with this. This is just a random graph that I put on the board. But let's see. Let's say we want to go from 0 to 3, okay, this point. If we trace it here and we trace this 0, okay, this is point 0. So we want to say what point is the highest. It's obvious that this point is the highest point on this graph. What point is the lowest? No, it's not this point. Well, definitely this is the lowest point. And fortunately, this point is usually the point where the graph turns. So this is a turning point or what you call a critical value because the rate of change is zero. So in this case, we differentiate the function and we equate it to zero and then we can find what x is because the rate of change here is equal to zero. But you notice that the answer, one of the answers, the highest point, is the end point of the interval that I chose from 0 to 3. So I observe that many students, because they're doing maxima and minima, usually don't consider the end point in taking um, the maximum or, or looking for the maximum or minima. They just focus on doing the differentiation and equating to 0 or, yeah, that's not the only thing you need to do. So remember, the end points are very important because sometimes the endpoints are actually the answers. For example, if our interval is supposed to go from three to five, let's consider three to five. So if we're going from here to here, um, here. So what is the maximum point within this interval? Well, it's gonna be five. It's gonna be the point where X is five. So it's F of five. What will be the minimum point within this interval? Well, it's gonna be this point which was our former maximum point. So you see now, and there's no turning point. And sometimes there could be a, a turning point. For example, if we go from, say, this point, so let's say this is negative 2.5, negative 2.5 to 3, for example, you'll notice that the highest point will, be, will still be this point, but the lowest point is now this point. It is much lower than this point. So even though you're going to have a point here that gives you a derivative of zero, this gives you a derivative of zero, you will still notice that a horizontal tangent, let me say it that way, these are turning points. This is a local um, maximum because it is still lower than this. You know, when I was learning this, I told myself that's a local champion. You're a champion, but you're not the overall champion. Within the interval, this is the overall champion because it's higher. So this is a local champ, no, local maximum. And this is a local minimum because it is still not the lowest point relative to this end point. So this is what I recommend. Whenever you get a function asking for maximum or minimum within an interval, First, quickly find the values for the end points, okay, and then go into your differentiation because that's going to help you a lot. And that's what I'm going to do for this video. So let's get into it. So based on the explanation that I just gave, I'm going to write the conclusion of all the story that I've told. And this is the conclusion that if a function f of x is defined on the interval, interval, this interval is a to b. 
So it's defined on this interval and that's what we're trying to study. What we're going to see is that the maximum or minimum, okay, of f of x. Now, when we say maximum or minimum, it could be the local maximum or the absolute maximum, local minimum or absolute minimum. We know that any minimum or any maximum will occur at these points. So the maximum or minimum of f of x occurs at any of f of a, which is the beginning. So if you just go to the graph and you look for what the graph looks like at a, that might be your maximum. And sometimes it's not. Or f of b, it could be actually at the end, or it could be in the middle, or f of c. What is the c? Well, c is between a and b, and when you take the derivative, okay, evaluate the function, the derivative of the function, it will be zero. And that's how we say, oh, that's a turning point. That must be a maximum, or that must be a maximum or a minimum. So we say that c is between this set, this interval of um, A and B. It's always in between A and B. You can't find it anywhere else because that's the boundary of our interval. And if you evaluate the derivative of this function at that C, you'll always get zero. So that's what we do. So with this at the back of your mind, you will understand. I know this looks like a lot of notes, but that's all you've got to know. So when you get a question like this, the first thing you want to do is find f of a, find f of b, and put it in one corner. So let's get into this. So I'm going to do it um, here because I'm going to erase it over time. Let's start from here. So f of a will be... Um, f of a will be equal to f of, what's our a? 0. So let's plug in 0 here. If I plug in 0 here, that's going to be equal to 0 divided by 0 minus 0 plus 1, and that's going to be 0. So we know that that's going to be 0. So on, this, on the chart, that's what we've got. We're going to have 0 somewhere. Okay, now what about f of b? So if we plug in b, which is 3, so f of 3 is going to be equal to 3 over 3 squared minus 3 plus 1. That's going to be 3 over 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 3 over 7. Okay, 3 over 7. So we've gotten two values now. And right now, this guy is leading. So this is going to be a maximum for us. And this is going to be a minimum for now. Okay, so whatever else we get, we're now going to compare with these ones to see what's going to happen. So what happens? Remember we said that the third point, you have to find the derivative of the function and find that point where c equals 0. Whatever c you get, you can plug it in here for, for f like we did here. So let's create the table yet. What is f of c? Well, we don't know what c is, so we're going to wait for now. Let's go find f of c. Okay, so firstly, what's f prime of x? We're going to differentiate this function, okay? Remember, this is a quotient because um, it's a rational expression. So we're going to apply the quotient rule. Remember the quotient rule? So let's put it this way. f of x equals f. No, we can't use f anymore. So I use u. I like u over v. Okay, then if f of x is u over v, then we know that f prime of um, x Okay, remember u is a function of x and v is a function of x also. So what we have here is this is a function of x, this is a function of x. So what would be f prime of x? Well, the rule says it's going to be v times u prime minus u times v prime divided by v squared. That's what we're going to apply. Okay, so it simply means that you're going to take the denominator okay, and multiply it by the derivative of the numerator. So what we're going to have right now, we're going to say f prime of x is going to be the denominator, that's x squared minus x plus 1, multiplied by the derivative 
of x, which is going to be 1, minus, we'll reverse the process, when I'm going to take the top now, which is x, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator. This is going to be 2x minus 1, so we multiply by 2x minus 1, and then we divide everything by v squared, what are v? Our v is here. So as you can see, this is our u, this implies u, and this implies v, okay? So we divide by v squared, that's x squared minus x plus 1 squared. So we get here, um, it's going to be x squared minus x plus 1 minus 2x squared plus x all divided by x squared minus x plus 1 squared. Now you notice that x squared minus 2x squared will be negative x squared. Um, we know this is going to take this out. So you have 1 minus x squared. That's what's left. So this is equal to 1 minus x squared over, this is going to be x squared minus x plus 1 squared. Oh, something I forgot to mention. So this is f prime of x. At this point, we just want to say we have found the derivative for what values of x will this derivative be equal to 0? And for what values of x will this derivative be undefined? Now, this is where I did not complete this condition. It's either f prime of c is 0 or f prime of c is undefined. I need to add that. So um, f prime of c is 0 or let me put slash undefined. Undefined. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze that in there because that's another condition. But it's not going to happen in this case because um, based on what I see, there's no way that the denominator is going to be 0. Do you know why? Because it's always positive, because you're going to square it, okay? Um, so many reasons, okay? But let's just, let's just focus it, because if you try to solve this quadratic equation now, what you notice, so look at this. When you have a rational expression, you want to tell yourself that when will the top be equal to 0? Find the value of x. When will the bottom be equal to 0? Find the value of x. This is not going to be 0, the denominator, because... If you try to solve this quadratic equation, you can factor it, and b squared will be less than 4ac. Therefore, you'll be getting imaginary numbers, and we don't want to deal with complex numbers. We're talking about the number line, the real number line. So the only part of this that's going to give you um, an answer is the first part that I took, where f of x is going to be 0. Okay, so we can continue and say... At critical critical value, okay, f prime of x, f prime of x is always equal to zero. And for a rational expression to be zero, only the numerator is zero. Remember that. Only the top part is zero for any rational expression. The denominator cannot be zero if you're saying the expression is zero. If the denominator is zero, then it's undefined, then that's going to be weird. But let's just go back to this. So we're just going to equate the top part to zero. So we say, therefore, 1 minus x squared equals zero. And if you solve for x, x is going to be plus or minus 1. Okay, now we have two values of x. x equals positive 1 or x equals negative 1. Okay, I'm going to write them out. x equals 1, x equals negative 1. Now watch this. Remember that C has to be between A and B. That is, has to be from 0 to 3. That's the part of the graph we're dealing with. Negative 1 is before 0, so it's not on this graph. Therefore, you cannot start substituting to evaluate for C with negative 1. So this is not in the interval. And you can say that negative 1 is not in the interval of this of 0 to 3. Okay? It's not within that interval, so we cannot accept negative 1. So the only number we can go use now is x equals 1, this one. So let's go here and plug in x equals 1. So what would be f of 1? 
which would be 1 over 1 squared minus 1 plus 1. That's going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 plus 1. That's 1. And that's everything gives you 1. So we have three values 1. Now we have 1, we have 3 over 7, and 0. Which is the biggest number here? It's 1. So the maximum point is where the function is equal to 1, and that happens when x equals 1. So we can say maximum, okay, maximum is at the point 1, 1. So the value of the function is 1, and the point, the value of x at that point is 1. And you can say the minimum. So what's the smallest number here? It's 0, and that happens when x is 0. Or oh, it's at the point 0, 0 is at the point 0, 0. So if they say what is the maximum value, you just read it off of this. If they say what is the minimum value, you read it off of this. And if you say at what point is it maximum, well, I just gave you. So these are the points I gave you, and the values are inside the parentheses. So the maximum value actually will be 1 and the minimum value will be 0. Okay, that is <laughs> max equals 1 and main equals 0. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.